What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. I hope it's the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a doctor working in London. And guys, I'm actually in the final weeks of my rotation in general internal medicine. So right now I'm actually in stroke medicine. So pretty much every single patient that comes to my ward is someone who's had a stroke. And essentially what a stroke is, is one of two things. We have two types of stroke, the first being an ischemic stroke and the second being a hemorrhagic stroke. Now I'm sure you guys know what a stroke is, where basically one of the vessels in your brain either bursts or is blocked and that is pretty much what it is. An ischemic stroke is where one of the vessels in your brain has been blocked by some sort of deposit, maybe a fatty clot or a fatty deposit. And the second type of stroke is a hemorrhagic stroke where one of the vessels in your brain has actually burst and is leaking blood into your brain. And that's essentially what we manage on my ward. In this video, I really want to break down my experience so far of working in this specialty and also the day-to-day -day things that I go through as a junior doctor in the NHS. Now, if you're someone who's going to be working as a doctor, I hope this video helps you out. It doesn't really matter what sort of job you end up in. Most junior doctors end up doing more or less the same sort of thing on their wards. So hopefully no matter what ward you end up in, in whatever specialty, this video will help you guys get a good sort of idea of what I do on a daily basis as a junior doctor. I really wanted to do like a whole sort of vlog on what I get up to in the hospital. But as you guys know, the hospital is really hot on, you know, patient confidentiality and filming policies. So I think the best way to kind of give you guys a good idea of what I go through is to sit down here with my laptop and take you through a general day in the life of a doctor. So let's go ahead and get started. I start off my morning at 9 a.m. and I finish at 5 p.m. That's on a normal shift, apart from when I'm on call and doing sort of on-call cover. But my normal day-to-day -day routine starts at 9 a.m. And when I say it starts at 9 a.m., I mean 9 a.m. sharp. If I'm not there, the ward round and the whole entire ward will carry on without me. So we start at 9 a.m. sharp. The first thing I do when I get to the ward is to take off my jumpers, my clothes, put on my stethoscope, get my pen ready, and I walk straight onto the ward where the first thing we do is we come together as a team and we have a board round. Now essentially what a board round is is that we have all of the different specialties and all of the different multidisciplinary team members come together in the morning so that includes all of the doctors and you know each grade of doctor being there so the consultants, the registrars and the junior doctors. We also have the nurses come together, the physiotherapists, the occupational therapists, the speech and language therapists, the dietitians, literally the whole entire team of maybe 20 to 25 people are here by the nurses station discussing all of the patients who are currently on our ward you know discussing all the new patients who just came in why they came in we discuss all of the old patients so where are all the previous patients at with their current management plan and what do we need to discuss in terms of going forward with their care and it's really just a nice meeting to have the first thing in the morning to discuss all of the patients that we have on the ward and this generally takes anywhere from 25 to 35 minutes we all sit down together and we go through every single patient step by step on the ward this is also a good opportunity to bring up any sort of problems that happened when the consultants weren't around. So for example, if one of my patients at around 4.30 p.m. on the previous afternoon deteriorated, I'll have to actually tell the whole entire team, including my consultants, exactly what happened, exactly what I had to do. So maybe they got sick and I had to prescribe some, you know, some antibiotics for a chest infection. Whatever happened when the consultants were around or the rest of the team weren't around, it's a nice place to kind of come together and discuss the patient um, in order. Okay, so I want to take a very quick break to thank Picmonic who are kindly sponsoring the video. Now, if you guys have watched my channel for a while now, you know that Picmonic is one of the number of ways that I actually used to revise in medical school and also now in my life and job as a doctor. What I love about Picmonic is that they don't just give you all this information like other resources online and expect you to just learn it. What Picmonic does is actually really unique. Picmonic gives you a picture, a mnemonic, and also a storyline to make learning new content super easy. Now, I'll never forget the day that I literally spent five minutes watching this Picmonic uh, about how to actually assess signs for compartment syndrome. And literally from that five minutes that I spent up until this day as a doctor, whenever I'm assessing a patient in the a &E with compartment syndrome, I'm able to literally memorize every single detail that I learned on that five minute video. And it's that unique ability to tie in a picture, the mnemonic and the storyline that makes it super super easy to remember things many, many years down the line. So here's a quick example of a compartment syndrome assessment from Pygmonic. Here we learn about compartment syndrome assessment, assess man disguised as compartments man. He's been shot with a trauma spike, representing that trauma or injury to tissues can cause compartment syndrome. 
What else I love about Pygmonic is that they give you daily quizzes to test your knowledge on what you've just learned. So it also applies active recall to help you better understand that content. If you actually find extra information that you also want to add from your own research, you're actually also able to edit the Pygmonics so that when you come back and learn it, you're able to have all of the information in one place. All of the content on Pygmonic is always up to date with students all around the world able to actually update the Pygmonic database, which is superimposed by the Pygmonic experts. One really funny and again a unique thing that Pygmonic does is all of the characters between the different storylines are actually related, which makes it really easy to differentiate between similar facts and also tie in all of the information that you learned together. If you guys want to try out Pygmonic for yourself, there is a free version. And if you also want to join Pygmonic officially on the premium subscription, you can click the link down below to get yourself off a percentage on the annual premium. Go and check it out, give it a go. That's Pygmonic. Let's go ahead and get back to the rest of the video. Once we actually get through every single patient and we finish the board round that's when we actually start our ward round and now the ward round is essentially where we now physically go and see all of the patients on the ward one by one we see how they're doing if anything changed overnight we assess them again and try our best to optimize their treatment so they can eventually go home hopefully sometime soon now most cases we go and see the patients with a consultant but if the consultant already has a management plan in place then sometimes the consultant won't actually come and see the patients with us and i as a junior doctor will go and see the patient myself and make Make sure they're doing okay again speak to them see how they were doing overnight examine them from head to toe listen to their lungs listen to their chest make sure they're opening their bowels and then if i have any sort of concerns with a patient and i'm actually worried about this patient i can either go and speak to the registrar who is the more senior person in my ward or if it's very very severe and let's say they're really deteriorated i can go ahead and also talk to the consultant directly about the patient who i'm worried about if however the consultant wants to go and see the patients with me then what i'll do and what my job is as a junior doctor is to go ahead and grab the patient notes. I'll sit down on the computer and start to prepare the notes so that when the consultant is ready to see the patient, we have the entire kind of notes ready to go and review the patient. So to quickly break down exactly what I do when I'm preparing the notes ahead of time for the consultant is I'll get a fresh sheet of paper. And yes, in my hospital, we still use paper notes, not, you know, computer notes. But I'll get a fresh sheet of paper. I'll write down today's date. I'll write down the we're on the ward round. I'll write all of the issues that the patient has, all the diagnoses, and basically a brief summary of the patient it's, um, themselves. And what I'll do is I'll go onto the computers and I'll write down all of the latest blood results that we have for the patient since the previous time we saw them. I'll also write down all of the observations of the patient. So the vital signs, including their heart rate, respiratory rate, and all those things, just so we have a nice, you know, overview of how the patient is doing while they've been on our ward. And since we saw them last, which was probably a day prior. If however, this is a new patient, meaning this is the first time they've come to our ward and the consultant doesn't actually know anything about this patient before the consultant comes, I'll be doing the exact same thing. So writing a summary of this patient, but also what I'll be doing is going from the very beginning. So when they came into the hospital in the emergency department, I'll be reading exactly, you know, what happened and why this patient came to our ward. So if they had any stroke symptoms like changes to their speech or weakness in their body, then I'll also look at the blood results and the blood tests they had in a and &E. I'll look at any sort of imaging they had. So any MRI scans or any CT scans of their head. And I'll prepare a very nice written summary so that when the consultant comes, to see this patient, I can actually hand over this patient to the consultant and give a very good summary of what happened to the patient from the very beginning when they came into the emergency department up until now. And this is really good because as a junior doctor who'll be looking after this patient on the ward, I need to know exactly what happened to this patient. And secondly as well, because it saves the consultant time so that they can literally receive a summary from me and we can go and see the patient physically ourselves. And this is actually quite an important point. When the consultants come and see the patient, they literally only see the patient for maybe, you know, five minutes maybe like six, seven minutes max. They make a management plan for the patient and it'll be me as a junior doctor basically looking after this patient on the ward for the rest of the day, unless I have any concerns where I'll then escalate any sort of concern to the registrar or the consultant. But the consultants essentially come around a couple of times a week and in between those periods of time where we see the patient with the consultant, it'll be me who does all of the jobs for the patient, which I'll talk a little bit more about later on in the video. Once I then sit down with the consultant on the computer and we discuss the patient and they're aware of who his patient is or just basically updated on what happened to them over the last 24 hours since we last saw them. Now is actually when we're actually ready to go and see the patient. And what we do is we walk to the patient wherever they might be in the ward and we start gowning up. So we put on the plastic sort of aprons that we wear as doctors. We put gloves on as well. And then we walk over to see the patient. Now, what is my actual role as a junior doctor when we're with the patient? So it's the actual consultant who kind of leads the ward round. So the consultant will introduce himself and introduce me as well. He'll say good morning, good afternoon, whatever it might be. And he'll be the one who's taking the history or 
asking the questions in regards to the patient. My job will be to hold that sheet of paper that I prepared and I'm basically a professional scribe. So I'll have a pen and paper and that paper that I prepared is where I'll be writing everything the consultant is saying. So all the questions he's asking like, you know, did you sleep well? Have you opened your bowels? All of those sorts of things. And then when the consultant examines the patient, I'll also be writing all the examination findings. Like this patient has a normal heart rate. They have right-sided weakness in their hand or in their leg. I'll be writing exactly what the consultant saw when examining the patient. And then finally, what I'll do is also write down the plan. And this really is the most important part of your job. You wanna make sure that you write down a plan of exactly what the consultant wants. So for example, the consultant might say that they want uh, an MRI brain scan to be requested for this patient. Maybe he wants some more specific blood tests for this patient. Maybe he wants to refer this patient to the rheumatology consultants. Whatever that might be, you have to write down the plan very clearly. And that's what the consultant wants you to do for the rest of the day. Once we finish the ward round, when we've seen you know all the patients that I'm looking after, I then normally go for lunch. So I'll take a very quick half an hour break in the canteen. And then I'll come back to the ward around maybe 1.30 p.m., 2 p.m. to then start and act on all of the jobs that the consultant has given me from the morning ward round. So as I mentioned, the sort of jobs that I'm given are, you know, chasing up scan results, ordering, you know, MRI brain results. Maybe this patient had pain in their knee and I need to order a knee x-ray. Maybe he wants a neurology doctor to come and review the patient. So I'll, you know, make that referral. Maybe they want a diabetic nurse to come and have a chat with the patient. So I'll make that referral as well. And a lot of what I have to do towards the afternoon from around 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. is very admin heavy jobs. So I'll be on the laptop or on the computer doing all these jobs, calling up people on the phone, calling up different doctors and doing all those jobs that the consultant has set out in order to manage the patient. And although a lot of this does seem like admin and it kind of is admin, at the same time, it's only a doctor who's really able to do these things. So for example, if you want to call a neurology doctor and get a neurology review, then it's you who has to be able to understand the history of the patient, understand what is wrong with the patient. So all of the examination findings that the consultant found when examining the patient, and you have to know the general plan of exactly what is going on with this patient because if you call a neurology doctor and you have no idea who his patient is and what's going on then he'll be like no I'm not going to come see his patient sorry goodbye so all these tasks are sort of admin tasks but their admin tasks can only really be done by a doctor and they normally fall on the most junior person in the team who are the junior doctors looking after the patient for the rest of the day the times where this might vary and where I may not necessarily do many admin things is as I said when I'm on call and I'll do a whole entire separate video of what I do when I'm on on-call shift, but also if the patient deteriorates. So to give you guys an example, there was one point and one point in time on my ward where one of our patients deteriorated. So in the morning when we saw them, they were chatting, they had some weakness in their body, obviously because of their stroke and they had some sort of neurological deficits because of their stroke. However, later on, one of the nurses came to me and was like, excuse me, doctor, this patient is not responding to us. Please come and review him. And that's a sort of situation where I have to act more like a doctor and not doing as many admin things. So I had to go and review the patient examine the patient, find out exactly what is wrong with them or why the nurse is concerned. I have to review their medications, review their observations or their vital signs and come up with a diagnosis of what I think is going on with this patient. For example, their stroke could have worsened. They could have had another stroke. Maybe they're septic because they have a chest pneumonia as well as a stroke and they're getting really sick. And then I have to actually start and initiate a management plan for this patient. So for example, in that patient that I saw who had deteriorated, I had to you know, examine the patient and I came up with the diagnosis of worsening of the current stroke of the patient and then I ordered an urgent MRI scan for my patient and once I had you know kind of stabilized the patient and come up with a good diagnosis and management plan I had to then call the consultant and escalate it to my consultant and tell the consultant exactly what I think is going on and whether or not he thinks the plan that I made for this patient is appropriate and this actually happens quite commonly sometimes I get blood results you know at 4 55 p.m before I go home and the patient's inflammatory markers are super high super raised and I go examine the patient to find out why they have such weird blood results and I find out that the patient actually has pneumonia and the consultant is not around and maybe I can have a quick chat with my registrar if they're around then I have to actually start and initiate a management plan for the patient and it's in those sort of unique scenarios where you actually have to do more than just admin on your ward and that is pretty much a general day in my life as a junior doctor so to quickly summarize we had the board round in the morning from 9 a.m to 9 30 a.m we then have the ward round from around 9 30 a.m all the way till around 1 p.m so a good couple of hours at 1 p.m I then go for lunch I'm back on the ward around 1 30 p.m and from 1 30 p.m till 5 p.m unless someone gets sick on my ward i then do all of the jobs that the consultant has set out for the patient another thing that i also have to do apart from emergencies that varies from the sort of admin stuff is throughout the afternoon you'll have nurses uh, you know constantly coming to you and saying doctor can i give this patient their medications doctor this patient is looking a bit more sick can you go and review 
them. You'll also have family members who'll come in the afternoon who want an update on how the patient's doing. So you have to go and you know talk to all the different family members about how the patient's doing. Maybe the physiotherapist or the occupational therapist might have a query that they want to come and talk to you about. Maybe the pharmacist will come and say, doctor, you know, this patient has a high blood pressure and for some reason they're, they don't have their high blood pressure medications prescribed. So throughout the entire afternoon, you are doing all the admin jobs, but as well as that, you're also fixing all the kind of issues that might come up with the patients throughout the entire day. And of course, responding to any emergencies uh, on the ward that might be taking place. Now for the next part of the video, I kind of wanted to reflect on this experience I've had in this uh, particular uh, specialty. I want to talk about the things that I've enjoyed and also the things that I haven't enjoyed as much. Now, if you guys have been following my channel, you know that on my last rotation, I was actually in pediatrics and I made a whole video about my reflections on pediatrics and my time so far being a doctor. So go and check out that video if you haven't already. And there are certain differences and things that I've actually enjoyed about this particular specialty that I didn't have in pediatrics. And the first kind of thing is that this specialty does give you some room to be independent. So as I mentioned, on some days, the consultant is not around and they want you to go and review the patients yourself on the ward round. And again, that's not some sort of um, independence that I have in pediatrics before, but the consultant would constantly come every single day to review all of my patients. Some days I'm on my own or the registrar is there as well, which is lovely. And I have to go and see the patients by myself on the ward round. And if I have any concerns, I can escalate it to the registrar or the consultants as well. And it's really nice having that bit of independence to kind of uh, think for myself. And there are times where I have to make decisions myself, like when I told you guys about regarding emergencies, but also less important things like, you know, you receive blood results and this patient's magnesium is super low and you have to actually go and manage this, you know, this, this sort of situation yourself and you have to think more independently on your feet. Or maybe, like I said, a patient's blood results come back and their CRP or their inflammatory markers are super high. And you have to think about, you know, what is causing these inflammatory markers being so high in their blood results? Do they have an infection that I need to actually start treating? So you have this area of independence, which is really good. And the second point really, so because I'm on the ward every single day and it's pretty much me being the ward doctor looking after this patient, I learn so much because a lot goes wrong when the consultant is not around. And I really have to think on my feet and manage this patient pretty much until the next day when the consultant is around and sometimes I won't be around you know for another two days so I have really learned a lot in the specialty particularly on just how to generally manage patients on a ward and the third thing I've really enjoyed about this placement is there's a lot of senior support so even though the consultant is not around sometimes they're very approachable so I can literally pick up my phone and I can give the consultant a call if I have some major concern about what's going on with the patient and they're very very approachable as well as that I also have registrars on my ward and again the registrar is the more senior person to me and it's so nice because if I'm confused and I think something's going on with this patient that I can't manage myself and I, you know, kind of reach the, you know, the, the top of my ability, it's super nice to have a registrar around who I can go and talk to and confirm anything that I'm worried about. Now, in terms of what I don't enjoy as much on this particular specialty is, as I'm sure you've guessed, it does sometimes get a bit monotonous, particularly with the admin work. So a lot of my hours, you know, in the afternoon is spent doing all these admin heavy stuff like requesting scans, requesting blood results, and that is quite admin heavy. That can get a bit boring. Of course, you do have to do it. And of course you are learning, but that can get a bit boring. The second thing, as I mentioned, you know, linked with the first point is that there is a lot of admin. There's a lot of admin to do discharge letters, requesting blood results. And that, as I said, with the first point is quite uh, monotonous. The third thing is that although it's very interesting and I've learned so much in stroke medicine and it is a specialty that I actually do genuinely find interesting, it's not necessarily what I want to do with my career. So I don't think I'm gonna end up being a stroke consultant and that obviously, you know, is something that is not as enjoyable. However, as I said, it is a super interesting specialty. And if you're thinking about applying to stroke medicine or stroke geriatrics, I highly, highly recommend it. It's a very interesting specialty and it's definitely a specialty that you can learn a lot in. So that pretty much is a whole entire summary of a normal nine to five day in my life on this stroke medicine rotation. I really hope it's given you some sort of idea of what my life is like as a junior doctor. And if you have any questions at all, please leave down below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. And before you leave, here are a bunch of videos on my channel that you might find interesting. Leave a like, make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you guys on the next one.